thanks for coming back. This is our Easter Squeal special. Everyone's on a long weekend, so I hope you're enjoying yours. Please stay tuned for the second part of our show. Them and Joy Westmore is one of them. Yeah. Nice segue. <laughs> now, Joy, you were, of course, Officer Barry. I was, and my name was Joyce. Joyce. Which Officer used to Joyce confuse Barry. everybody no end, whether they called me Joyce, whether they called me Joy. So, it didn't matter. Didn't matter, didn't care. Didn't matter. No. So, when did you join the cast? I joined the cast, actually, in episode all, about 60. They, okay. My agent rang up and said, do you want to do two days on prisoner? Certainly, I said. <laughs> <laughs> I went out and I did a couple of OB days, and, uh, you know, outside broadcast days. Oh, thank you. <laughs> and then they asked me back every now and then, and then I would be in for a couple of weeks, just tiny little bits, and then Well, did they ask you back, do you think, because you were a hard screw? Or... <laughs> well, I thought I was always renowned as a big... And a good screw. Good screw. <laughs> a good a screw. lot of people have said that about Joy. <laughs> <laughs> Go on. A nice sorry. gentle screw. I like. <laughs> Actually, I think I got sillier as the as the series went on. Well, you got tamer, I think. Tabitha Do you? was saying that before, weren't you? Tabitha, is that right? Mm. I was just normal. <laughs> and at the beginning, you were sort of a bit, um, you were just strict. You weren't, you're down straight down the line. But as right. you got on, you got all giggly and silly. And <laughs> well, that, was because, that was because they wanted a fool of an officer who let all the prisoners out and all the wicked <laughs> people in. They'd say, I'm here to see. I'd say, all right, come in. <laughs> <laughs> oh, all right, you can go. <laughs> and, you know, people had to escape, and it was always Joyce that did it. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Horeen, it's not that gay and lesbian bent TV again. You know I've got a bad ticker. Oh, shut up, Dizzy. This week they've got almost as many people as a cast of Prisoner. <laughs> oh, dear. Positive women. You don't really hear much about positive women in no. the media, gay or mainstream. Otherwise, no, yes. you don't. I mean, I think that's... A lot of people find that too quite amazing that there are women around with HIV AIDS so you know we actually have within within the gay community we've got um, quite a small profile and one of the good things about the prisoner fundraiser and also another event that we're involved in is that we're going to be raising the profile of these women to let the people know that you know women do get HIV AIDS that there is um, there needs to be community awareness there needs to be education and we also need support you know and it's a different kind of support yeah, I mean, our women, most half the women have got kids. Exactly. Yeah. Um, so they're maybe single parents. Um, so you need like... Yeah. Also, too, Stephanie, I would think that the problem with um, a woman who's HIV AIDS yeah. is the... Do you do you tell the community? Yeah. When, you, when you've got yeah. children, when you've perhaps got a partner That's right, Annie. That's who right. is in a, a high-flying job, yeah. do you tell the school? No. Yeah. Um, all of I mean, those are, the, those are the issues for the women. I mean, within the gay community, there's sort of a community within the community. Mm -hmm. But for our women, we're often very isolated and also um, on their own maybe, or maybe with a partner, but, you know... If they tell the, you know, if they tell the school, or the, their kids get sort of then stigmatised or discriminated against, you know. Does that happen? I mean, Does that happen? It has happened. Yeah. yeah. Well, Alicia yeah. was on last week, yeah. and she said she was still in school, I think, when yeah. her mother was diagnosed HIV oh, positive, absolutely. and she said it was good in the sense that her actual school they got together an education program for the kids in the school. Oh, yeah, cool. and which was great. It was yeah. approached in a positive way because that was my concern for her last okay. week. I said, did you? Because her, not that it matters how you get HIV, exactly. but her mother got it through transfusion. Right. Mm -hmm. But there is a stigma involved mm -hmm. in yeah, having yeah. HIV, and therefore kids also suffer. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and kids yeah, get and that's why, Yeah, and that's also why the women don't want to go out. And, you know, they're not as sort of open about their status as some of the other groups are. Yeah. So, you know, the Positive Women Organisation is a really good support for them, where they can come and meet with other women to talk about the issues that are relevant to women. You know, I mean, gynaecological issues, kids. Um, it's good to meet someone who's got the same, same problems, problem. exactly. isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> what does a gay and lesbian liaison officer do? Well, I guess really the position just title describes exactly what I'm doing, and it's liaising with the community as a police officer to ensure that um, the needs of the community are met by the police service. So, what are you finding are the needs of the community? I haven't got a clue. What? Oh, um, I guess you know. A number of members of the community, for whatever reason, find it difficult to approach police. And right. so, 
in my position, I'd encourage uh, any member of the community, if they've got any issues in relation to police service or any issues in relation to uh, being a victim of crime mm. or any crime that's been committed, they can come directly to me and I can lead them into the right direction. Now, I know you're just on, hot on the job, so that's, that's a bit hard to say, but what, what kind, um, without being specific, what have people mainly been coming to you about? Um, look, I've had a really wide variety um, of what people have been coming to me about. I've had a number of jobs already and they have literally ranged from the very worst situation as in a murder through to a domestic violence situation through to just harassment, seeking advice. Now domestic violence is a good one because a lot of people wouldn't believe that domestic violence is something that a gay couple, for example, would mm -hmm. face. Mm -hmm. um, they think, oh, they just Very dump them and move on to the next one. Well, I am living proof. I'm here to tell you that in a 10-year relationship, you do get knocked around occasionally. Now, I'm not saying that's true in every relationship, <laughs> but it happens in gay relationships just mm -hmm. like it does in straight. Yeah, certainly. I, I personally see uh, same-sex domestic violence as a really big issue in the community. A gay family in, well, now in the millennium. How's it all going? Tell us how you met. And how long have you been together for? Well, we've been together for uh, 17 years, last January. Well, and we met in, um, I suppose I can say mandate, can't I? Yeah, it's close. <laughs> it is, I know. May it rest in peace. <laughs> um, and basically it was, was love at first sight, I guess. We went home that night and been together ever since. <laughs> and were you, were you married at the time? Yeah. Yeah. <gasps> I know, shock. You bad man. <laughs> Thought you were separated. Or no, I was actually still married. Yes. I was still living at uh, home with my ex-wife and my daughter. And your daughter and your beautiful daughter's yes. here. You, do you remember much of that? No. <laughs> Don't remember at all? No. Was, there, was there fights? Like, did, did your wife sort of... Oh, we just didn't talk. It was easier. So it was, <laughs> it was, easier, was it easier for her that you left, you sort of like left for another man than another woman? Do you no. think? Because you know some people say, if you'd left me for another man, you know, you know, they get all like spastic that another woman they, they'd be so jealous of, but another man they can sort of yeah, cope with. Yeah, no, she would have, I think she would have found it better if it was another woman. Oh. Uh, because I, I think it's this, um, it, oh, the, the jealousy thing was, well, she couldn't fight for um, she couldn't, yeah, yeah, she couldn't use her sexual no. feminine wiles to bring you back. <laughs> no, so... Did you ever meet the wife? Oh, <laughs> yes, I've met her a few times. She's nice to you? Um, well, yes, I suppose she eventually went, so, yeah. And so now, you grew up, you stayed with Mum? Yeah. And Mum was, Mum never said anything to you about that? She kept you pretty much... No, yeah, she, she was pretty good about it. I mean, she never bad-mouthed him to me that I can remember anyway. Oh, that's so, good. Yeah. How was it for you guys, like getting to know each other because obviously you know you guys are related by blood but for, for Barry and Melanie what was it like getting used to each other? Well I've always, um, I've been an uncle since I was 10 years old so I've had lots of kids around oh. me all the time and it didn't take any any time really for me to get used to it. I was a little bit nervous at first. Um, naturally I suppose you're you know, worried about the type of impression that you'll make on the child but um, no we got on quite famously actually. I think the benefit of having a farm in, in the city is... Oh, oh, oh. So oh. this is uh, this is our producer. <laughs> <laughs> Hold him up. Let's have a look at him before we send him off. There he is. Baby <laughs> oh. Yeah, we'll Stop see it. you afterwards. He's hating the show. This <laughs> we were going to have um, Madeline Swain on as our surprised guest because she was going to look surprised. But now we have our executive producer, Stephen, who's even more surprised. So welcome, Stephen. Oh, you had no idea you were going to be on the panel Walked today. Off the street. And straight on TV. So that's what can happen if you come and be event TV volunteer. You can walk in off the street. Hey, we found Colter. And here we are with Colotta and the fabulous Miss Millie Minogue. Say hi, girls. Hi. Now, the complimentary event TV vodka shot, yeah? Say ah. And one for you. Ah. Hey. God, I love Melbourne. <laughs> and how, you, how are you finding the event? I love it. I think it's fabulous. I think it's fantastic. I've taken photographs to go back to Sydney and show them how you do it. Well, why don't you take some videos and oh, actually, all those people in Sydney, you can watch us on Optus Vision. Get Optus Vision because you can watch Ben TV and you can see Carlotta in Melbourne at the street party. And don't forget, if you're coming up for Mardi Gras in Sydney, I'm flying Millie up, one of your, your most famous... And we love Millie. ...export from Melbourne, and she's appearing in my show at the Hilton Hotel on the 18th of February. Did you see yourself on telly? 
Um, yeah, I did. Did you enjoy it? Oh, yes, I always love my own image. And do you watch Ben TV? Yes, I do, of course, every Monday. At 9 o'clock, what's Ben TV? You can see Paris and Rita and Candy and Barbara and all of them here on Ben TV. So you must watch out for Paris tonight. I spent days on her outfit and she looks fantastic. Where is she? Well, she's making a late entrance. She's always like that. Fascinatingly late. You know, you're such a talent behind all the, all the costumes. Like, I've seen some of the costumes that come out on stage that you've been sitting there at the sewing machine sewing away. Bloody hours, hours of it. It's ridiculous. Well, it's a credit to you and I'd just like to thank I you. To, I used to love it. I hate it now. Sitting at that fucking sewing machine, but anyway. Well, look, when you've got a talent, you've got to work it, I say. You get it done. Get the job done, you know. Well, look, I hope you enjoy yourself. Have a happy mis midsummer. I will. Happy midsummer to all Bent viewers. Someone told me that someone got arrested yesterday at... Uh... At midsummer, Stephen. Yes, but it wasn't all bad. George Michael. <laughs> George Michael. Well, he went around public toilets. I don't want to tell them too much. It's well, let's not tell them anything. Let's show them the footage. Let's go to it now. Well, I hope I look all right. I mean, it's a gay and lesbian festival. Do you like my shirt? Do you like my tiara? I've got my flare gun. I think I look all right. Don't you think I look all right? Oh, Listen, I've had a number of complaints from a few people about the way you dress. My name's Sergeant oh. Worse, I'm from the Fashion Police. Hi. The and Fashion Police? Oh, I didn't sorry? know they had Fashion Police at Midsummer. Well, they do, actually. Oh, well, they obviously haven't been doing their job, because I've seen some shocking but fashions I've there. had quite a few complaints ranging from the tiara with this sort of, uh, just a plain T-shirt. Uh, um, but this cost me $15, this shirt. I mean, you're all black. I mean, that's really... Isn't that Melbourne, though? No. Not oh. anymore. It used to be. Well, I'm sorry. That's, what we're, that's why we're here. We're trying to change that image. Oh, so am so I... So you've, you've actually failed miserably today. Am so I in I trouble to, with the law? I'm going to have to ask you to state your full name and address. Um... Love Kitten. Sorry, I'm spitting on you. Right, sorry, what is it? Love Kitten. L-O-V-E. Love. Is that L-O-V yeah. or L-U-V? Love, as in opposed to hate. Love. Love. L-O-V-E. Kitten, kitten, as a cat, as opposed to dog. Kitten, yeah. And where do you live, love? Uh, a house in St Kilda. Yeah, what's your address? Um, number one, Love Kitten Street. Love Kitten you Lane. You are so boring. Your name's not <laughs> Kitten, you live in Love Kitten. Well, uh, yeah. You've uh, got to do something about that as well. I'm I just think. a bit nervous because I'm in trouble with the I'm law. Sorry, love. You're going to have to come with me, all right? I've got to come with you. <laughs> Amulus. I'm off to the police station. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> oh, my Lord. Oh, that was so much fun. I, he's pretty... <laughs> He told me he couldn't act, but he was really, really nice. I can't I even know the gentleman's name. He's, he's an actual police officer, and thank you. I'd like to say hello to all the police officers that were down at Midsummer because they were all delightful. There was a, a big, beautiful Barbie doll police girl, and she wouldn't come on camera, but hello to you. And there was two really cute ones, and I think one of them might have been gay. It was really sweet. I don't have... It was a bit like, uh, welcome back and we'll come back soon. And long gazes won't get you where you